Hello everyone. So you open your form and you go clickety click. Very excited to see what's happening in here and what do you have and what have you not. And then suddenly you see, whoa, there's a new horse form update. So let's go look. Horse form, here we come. You get to the horse form and the first thing you think is what on earth happened here? There's like brown bubbles spotting up everywhere, like pop, 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 pop. It looks like one of those popping games. And the buildings have been replaced by, I don't know, dumps of building rubble. So what is this all about? So first of all, the horse form update has four new buildings. It has a few grown trees that you get already like those ones and those ones and there's a mushroom tree and then there's a whole lot of tree stumps and each one of these tree stumps eventually will be grown into a tree not yet because we don't have the money and also because it's not the first prior priority what kind of tree will it be you don't know you'll have to actually grow it to see what tree it will be you cannot specifically target trees or tree stumps to get specific trees. There will be new tasks on this on the side as well for the horse farm, which I don't have on this farm because it's not high enough level. But the first thing that you will need to do is to upgrade the tannery. You will see that the upgrade cost has a certain amount of horse crests. And that horse crest you can only earn from racing your horses. There at the top it will show you the number of horse crests you currently own as a new kind of currency with your dollars and gold and so forth. When you race your horses, you will find that you, the interface looks a little bit different to tell you how many horse crests you will earn from every race. Okay, so there's two things that I still need to mention. The first one is all these new buildings and the new interface for the racing will only be available when you have a level of 60 and higher. Until then, you still need to work, have time to work on your horses and the new buildings are not available yet. Also, when you load the farm for the first time, your trees will just be standing still and not have any pop-ups. You do not need to do anything specific for them to start growing. They grow their products, which could be blue bugs or kapok fruit, hibiscus flowers and so forth. They grow them by themselves. All that you need to do is periodically, periodically go harvest them. You get the harvest and immediately they start producing more of it. You don't need to start the production in any way. That having said, looking at the first building, the tannery, which is the first one that you need to do. At the moment, there's no production happening because I do not have enough materials. I do not have enough leather mushroom in order to make vegan leather, vegan mushroom leather. The numbers here may be a little bit confusing. What it is saying is from a production point of view. You, when you are starting a production, it will use 50 of your available mushrooms. In my case, it's 40. So it's not enough, therefore it is in red, it cannot start producing. When we go harvest some mushrooms, ta-da! See, once again, immediately the production has started. And if you look at it, that production has already started. In, the, in 10 minutes, it will be finished with that production. And another 18 mushroom leather will be added to our barn which will give us a total of just over a hundred. When that production is finished, it will automatically restart another mushroom leather because it still has enough materials. The next production, once again, will use up 50 mushrooms of my available 90. If I do not want another mushroom leather immediately after this one, I need to move away the production now from that to somewhere where, will it, where it will not start new productions. 
Otherwise, it will produce and produce and produce automatically as long as you have the available materials. And when you get to your farm, you will have to sell the excess. The only way to control it is to move it away from the production. So it is still producing those. This is merely showing you what will be produced next. So let's see, there's enough mushrooms to start a new production, but not enough cork. If we go harvest some cork, then the building will show you that next, which means as soon as that time is up there, then next it will start producing the composite leather all by itself. And the composite leather will add another four of it to our available space. And then it will stop because after that we will not have enough mushrooms to make another batch of it. And the same goes for all the other buildings. You have to build them one by one. Each one of them takes eight hours to build. And each one of them also requires the horse crests to build. Other than the uh, materials you use, you do not need to use any kind of currency to start the productions. We still have space available and we have blue dye that can be made. So the moment we move over the selector to the blue dye, it starts a new batch. And if we leave it here, it will start another new batch because we still have enough blue bugs to start the next one of blue dye as well. If we specifically want to move to uh, produce something else, then first of all, we will need to go harvest that. Leaves, leaves, leaves. Do I have any leaves? Nope, no leaves. What do we need? Hibiscus flowers. Yep, we can still make a bunch of those if we have flowers. Yay, there's flowers. Will we need more? Let's go see. Nope. So if I only want to make one blue dye and then move over to the red dye, then the red dye will be next. And in fact, since I have enough, it will make two batches of the red dye consecutively, unless I move away the selector again. And that is the dye works. As you can see here, the tree stumps needs to be upgraded. I have it on four hours at the moment because I have a half time or a shorter time bonus at the going on now but normally it is eight hours for each and every tree stump so if you look at the farm that's going to be a lot of trees and a lot of hours and i have absolutely no idea how i am going to candy hunt on this farm ever again but that aside let's get back to the horse farm upgrades so the tannery the dye works the spinning mill kind of make intermediate products. When you have the, the materials that you need from there, only then can you go to the saddler's workshop. And in the saddler's workshop, you can make very specific equipment that will alter the behavior of your horses very specifically per race. You can look at all the equipment that is possible to make at the moment. You can also see there how much you have already made of each one of them. One thing that I do need to show you that I'm quite happy about is that it doesn't take time to make these productions. So you don't need to stock up on them for a long time ahead. If you are in a race and you find that you may need one of these specific saddles, if you have the intermediate materials ready and the raw, there's no raw materials, just craft this equipment and voila, it's in your barn, ready to use. The last thing I need to show you is that the um, competition transporter now does look rather different. In fact, it looks a lot different. When you choose your preferred, um, hmm, what is that word? Discipline. When you choose your preferred discipline, and there's the three potential competitors, just like you had before, so it is all the same things, it's just in different places. But what you can see is that for every potential race that you start, you will get different kind of rewards.
For this one, you will get a number of horseshoes, as it was always. You will get some ranking points in the tournament, as always. But the new thing is the horse crests. So against this person or this horse, that is the number of horse crests the winner will get. In this one, that is the number of horse crests. See, although they are both the same level horse, for some reason, the one will earn you a whole lot more horse crests than the other. And the same thing that it also varies from discipline to discipline. So against this player, I would get a whole lot more horse crests if I win. Then on dressage, it would be 9,000. On jumping, 16,000. Racing, 10,000. So the temptation may be to go for the most horse crests. And I'm not quite sure about that, but I do think that that also has the possibility of you losing higher. So it's up to you. What do you want to do? Do you want to play it safe, win the competition and get less payout? Or do you want to go for it, take the highest payout and stand the risk of losing? When you have decided your competitor, Then here would be the space where you can choose to add, add any specific equipment for that race. Now that is not the main purpose of this video. This one was really to get going on the farms and the buildings, not so much the racing. But for every race you will have all these things that you can make in the Sadler's Workshop. And lastly, when you do start the race, we, yay, I won. But far more interesting than that, you can see a complete breakdown of the race. The first step, second step, third step. So far it looks all good. Wow, this was a good one. Eesh, I wish they were all like this. Okay, so that was a win. If I try another race and look at it, you can also see a breakdown of the horse track. There will be 12 of this kind of obstacle in this race. There will be 16 of this kind and 8 of that kind. So if you look at your equipment, you can also tailor the equipment specific for the number of obstacles that there will be in that specific race. More on that later. I think that is more than enough information for step one. I encourage you to do try this. I think the horse farm can be lots of fun. Yes, it will take time to build the buildings and it will take a long time to upgrade all the trees. But um, that where's the fun in something that would not take any time at all. So enjoy. Happy